Hey, what's up, guys? It's Arlie, and I'm here with another video. Um, so I want to talk about this issue because I think it's important. Why do Chinese billionaires keep disappearing? You know, I ask myself this all the time. Why? Why do Chinese billionaires disappear all the time? And it's actually quite simple. You know, um, in a country that's authoritarian ran by Xi Jinping, a, uh, like, like I said, it's not the same as America, right? So, um, and any other, in America is not the only place it's a democracy, but, um, in a country like America, um, the majority of land and, you know, property and businesses and goods and services are ran by corporations and corporations do have some regulations, but for the most part, the government's kind of hands off, um, unless it's something serious like tax fraud or, uh, revenue fraud or, uh, uh, just unhumane business practices and things like that. That's why we have regulators here in China. It's a little bit different. Not only are you regulated from the start, but you don't really control anything uh, at all. You don't control n nothing, all right? So it's a little different. What the? These people are weird. <laughs> that guy just walked by. You see him behind me. He was kind of like acting weird. But um, yeah, um, it's a little different because China, it, it's... It's, author it's an authoritarian country, and you, you can't just say, oh, I started a business. It's my business. I can do what I want for the most part. You know, in America, yeah, we have regulators, but for the most part, you, you can control most of your business. You have creative control. You have some sort of control over the price of goods and market share um, and things of that nature. But with China, if you own a business... They basically overnight could say, no, this isn't yours anymore and can take over it. Or they can uh, tax you as hard as they want to. Or uh, they could just simply make you disappear because you said something that was out of line with the Communist Party. That is the difference between China and, and America. So when I talk about Chinese billionaires disappearing, let's talk about Jack Ma. But he's not the only one. There's been a couple billionaires before. He was just like a high profile billionaire in China. He disappeared somewhere in October of last year, October 2020. And he reemerged around the end of January of 2021. Now, the way he was speaking before and the way he's speaking now, it's almost like they put him in some type of re-education camp. Because he's he's not even, it doesn't even sound like him anymore. It, it sounds like they may have told him, hey, you need to do this or we will do this to you or w whatever. But it, it's I mean, you could just see the fear in his face when you hear him talk or you see the pictures and the articles. You know, if you go to China, man, and you start a business or you want to go there and say what you want to say, it's not happening, man. Those folks over there, the, the Chinese Communist Party will kill you. They will kill you or re-educate you or beat you until you know what the deal is, man. They, they're treacherous. Um, and yeah, they have embraced capitalism a little bit more, um, but it's only to a benefit, you know. It's good for the market. It's good for the economy. But it's not good for the Communist Party in terms of okay, it's getting a little out of hand. So they've put laws in place and put protocols in place to where if someone has a conglomerate that is built in the Communist Party in that country, they still maintain control. And that sucks because i give you an example with TikTok. Now, I don't agree with everything Donald Trump has done. Clearly, I, I didn't even vote for him. I didn't vote for him the first time. Didn't vote for him the second time. Um, Donald Trump did something that I did like, though. He was like, okay, we need to question this whole TikTok thing. And it's owned by, I believe, Tencent. 
you got to understand that any company that is, even if, I know a lot of people like to say, oh, ByteDance and Tencent and all these companies and TikTok, that, you know, technically it's American. I'm like, okay, but where did the app originate? Where did the original framework, where was the original framework designed? I'm pretty sure they're still using some of their servers. I'm pretty sure they're still using some of their infrastructure. And I'm pretty sure that the original company before ByteDance kind of took over TikTok and changed it from Musical.ly to TikTok, I'm pretty sure, I, I, th th just, this might be a theory. I, I, I want to say it's, it's, I want to say it's 80% true that it's possible that the, the Chinese is still getting U.S. data through an app that seems harmless. And I'm, the reason why I say this is because there's a policy with the Communist Party that any business that has started or is part of China has to report all user data. I'm not even joking. If there's an app that's, I used to use WeChat, right? I've used Chinese apps on my phone, even in America, because I have friends over in these countries. Okay, you know, over in, in Chinese, in a Chinese country, I have friends over there in, uh, in that area. It's, it just, you can't be that naive to think that an app over here, that yes, is mostly American, but has ties to a Chinese company, isn't collecting user data on that American app. It's just not, it. it's bad judgment to think that they wouldn't do that. And I'm not here to say that China is the big bad wolf. America has done its dirt too. But I think you should watch China too. I think you should watch both the U.S. and America. But all in all, I hope that what I just talked about without going off topic is giving you a perspective of why China does the things they do. And it's all about control. This is why Chinese billionaires keep disappearing. It's all about power. It's all about control. Getting the user data. Controlling what a company is doing. It's very, very important. All right. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. That's all I've got to say in, in general. But yeah, man. Take it serious. Take it serious. Um, not to say that all of China is bad. And I'm sure the people of China are not like horrible people. I mean, there's horrible people everywhere. But obviously, you know, you saw the, 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 the uh, protests in Hong Kong with those students and how they used brute force to shut them down and get them to shut up. That's the China... That, that's China. You don't have the same rights with free speech. Some of you are forced to work in a factory over there. And you may be worth more. You may be... Who knows? There could have been a million new Elon Musk. Or a million new Jeff Bezos over there. But they've been subjugated and pushed and oppressed into working for the quote-unquote Communist Party's greater good of uh, benefiting society. But it's too regulatory, too authoritarian for any... There is innovation, but at some point, innovation will stifle with the way they're doing things. But I will give it to them. They leave a little room for innovation, a little room for... And a little room for control as well. It's like they've... Communism has finally balanced it just a tiny bit. But the reason why Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos is able to emerge here in America is because, well... Economies of scale. Internet. These guys got on and utilize this. And they didn't have any oversight of someone trying to tell them, hey, you can't visit this website. You can't do this. You can't do that. And bam, now we have a whole e-commerce service. Now we have electric cars. They're actually viable. Because they took risk, used their capital, 
and their wit to get something done. Can that happen in China? Absolutely. But will there be oversight? Of course. And will they be as big? I don't know. It's kind of hard. Sometimes I wonder how even Jack Ma got Alibaba to his size. And I'm pretty sure there was some, some qualms he's had with the Communist Party. I'm telling you, man. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys enjoy what I have to say, but yeah, man, Chinese billionaires keep disappearing. And this video was inspired for me to talk about because uh, there's a YouTuber I watch named Jack Tran, Jake Tran. I really like to like his content. I might do something like this more and maybe add clips of what I'm talking about, but would still show my face. I think that'd be kind of cool, you know. Uh, but yeah, peace.